Hey, hey, wow, Nigeria, Nigerians. Your mumu too much, oh, your mumu too much, your mumu too much. Is it until be you begin to lose your life? Are you not choking? Are you not going through pain? This thing is a man made thing, oh. This thing is a man made thing. How can we be suffering in a land that is blessed by God? A land that we have crude oil. Hello, my great and wonderful people. We welcome you once again to our today's episode of this program. And today, <laughs> before we continue, I offer some for you this media to apologize to each and every one of you for the time when the BC will not issue up ever since. We did very, very sorry. Honestly, this one will be what we promise you now. But we now still remember, say, we get a lot of other activities on BCC Day, our hand. When ABC see they carry us, they walk out like leke leke. I beg beer with us. I don't see Una don't wait too much. But here now we not come back. All right, we get a lot of things for our table today. A lot of things when the business they happen ever since when the business we need to touch lights, even as we come back right now. The first one, just as you see, and from the beginning of this broadcast, when the business they receive the recent video from Prophet Isa Ebuba. This man come as to speak to Nigerians direct. This one will be the first time when we say this man they send message across, but this one he pain out to the bone. For the way when they say it is sent this message across, they mention Nigerians and also they describe the situation when it be say all of us they pass through today. All right, we'll deliver you to watch the video shortly and not be only your own video. We equally get another one from Barista Dele Farotimi, also a human rights activist. The recent video when they say it also they send across to each and every one of us. We get a lot for our table. We just beg you, say, make you stay relaxed and also not forget to help us share this video and like as you always do and leave your comments for us for the comment session. As we quickly leave you, make you watch this one first from Prophet Isa Ebuba. We'll come back for more. Hey, hey, wow, Nigeria, Nigerians. Your mumu too much, oh, your mumu too much, your mumu too much. Is it until be you begin to lose your life? Are you not choking? Are you not going through pain? This thing is a man-made thing, oh. This thing is a man-made thing. How can we be suffering in a land that is blessed by God? A land that we have crude oil. You've been on the queue for more than three weeks. Don't you know that all of this is stage managed and being planned out? To see how you react. The managing director of the NMPC. No way to what they, they do. It's time we rise up against the NMPC. How can you buy fuel for 1,000? This afternoon I bought fuel for 1,000 Naira. 1,000 Naira. Fuel. Throwing us into another level of suffering and inflation. And you are there. Sitting down. The day you are tired, like Isaac said to Esau, the day you are tired of this pain, you will break this yoke off your neck. How long? How long? Fuel. 1,000 era. Ah, it's on filling station, 815 era. But I bought it today. When you are tired of your condition, you will reach out to each one. And that's why you need to send this message to every Nigerian. It's time you rise up against the NMPC management. We cannot afford. Enough pain is already upon Nigerians. And we can throw ourselves into another pain. Do what is right and save your country. Hi! Nigeria. All right, my great and wonderful people. I believe say all of them don't hear that very well from Prophet Isa El Buba. A lot of people want to be say yes, they know what did they happen. They come outside, they cry out to each and every one of us when they be say the ignorance of what did they happen and the processes when they be say our leaders they take us through to put us for the situation when they be say all of us did today. But the question I know pass be say how many of us ready 
to embrace the truth and walk with the truth. According to the question when we say he asks each and every one of us right now, how long we will continue to de- suffer and equally dismind at the same time? All of us, they die for secrets. And when we come out openly, we open our teeth, they say all is well. All right, until all of us, they tire. Together, we they tire. Nothing will change for this country. Nobody, as we continue to talk, when it be say it will change the situation of this country, no foreign body will change the situation of Nigeria. Now we, by ourselves, will change the situation if we dare ready. All right, I'll leave you to share your own opinion with us in the comment section concerning that very one. Even as I take you down to this other video, one of the received recently from Barista Dele Farotimi, a human rights activist. I beg, brace yourself. Anytime when you to receive videos like this from this man, we already tell you say not be joke. And after everything, you will understand the reason why basically they talk like that. Oh yeah, we'll come back for more. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. I have um, picked a rather naughty topic. Said Nigeria solving the Ryman problem. If you're a mathematician, like my brother and friend, Modi Olaguro, PhD, you would have come across the Ryman hypothesis at one point or the other in your studies. The Ryman hypothesis is one of those mathematical equations, questions or equation, I should say, that uh, mathematicians are deemed irresolvable a problem that cannot be solved. Not unlike um, what the Greek would refer to as a Sisyphean problem. That is when you're given a stone to roll uphill. Nigeria comes across as being something of that nature, an unresolvable problem. So over the years you find multiple geniuses and thinkers, more temperate men than myself and women too, attempt to solve the Nigerian problem and they ended up consumed by Nigeria because make no mistake about it, Nigeria kills and it kills with brutal efficiency. It doesn't just kill persons, that's routine for Nigeria. But Nigeria kills dreams, it kills visions, it kills hope. It drains the fighter of every resolve to fight a system that would appear to be relentless in its capacity to kill. Nigeria kills and it's consumed a lot of men who have tried to solve the Nigerian problem. Or shall I say problems? But if we are to attempt to solve a problem, we must first of all have clarity as to what the problems are or is. And it is only in the knowledge of the problem, or shall we say diagnosis, that you then begin to deal with the solution or the likely solutions. So what are the Nigerian problems? The Ryman hypothesis or the Sisyphean task as it relates to Nigeria. What are these problems? Remember, I want to talk about the solutions. But it is important that we ask ourselves, what are the problems or who are the problems? And it brings to mind the Yoruba proverb. He says, Ajala, Tanoe, a question to Ajala, who, 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 who whipped you? And Ajala turned to the person asking the question. She may not know, isn't it you? So the Nigerian problem, when we ask what the problems are, I believe that we should look in the mirror both to find the problem and to find the solutions. And I think sometimes to even identify the problems, we do need 
some deep introspection and self-identification as well. Because we have both the problems and the solution to the problems. We have the problem of insecurity. Insecurity manifests in different ways across the length and breadth of Nigeria. But let me speak to what I know. Let me begin from where I live, my region, the southwestern part of Nigeria. In the southwestern part of Nigeria, insecurity flows from different fountains. In Lagos, it flows from the criminal capture of the state. Don't worry, it's not unique to Lagos. Lagos is not the only state that has been criminally captured. But this is where I live, so let's speak to that one since we're speaking to insecurity. A couple of days back, one of my friends on social media, yeah, I believe he was, uh, said, no, 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 it wasn't here. He was actually my brother, Peter Oshin. He asked the question, if people still kill big pockets in Lagos by dousing them with petrol, and some, <laughs> some scallywag said, oh, petrol is too expensive to be wasted on robbers. And I said, actually, it goes beyond that. The boys who used to pick pockets in Lagos back in the days now work for the union or they work for, the Le for Team Lagos or they work for one of the many criminal gangs that are required to enforce the political will of those who have captured the state. Oh yeah, Pepper did its thing. And my gen also just started burning my money in this age of blabber. So back to the subject. Those who used to pick pockets in Lagos now work for the state in different capacities and in different ways. So incidences of um, pickpocketing, even though still there, is either licensed by those who would want, but you know the story. Practically every criminal in the state said to discount the normal everyday burglars here and there, but the real criminals who used to terrorize the state have now found different roles for their existence. You find the same NURTW structure in your state, where the one that is pretending to be a whole lot of dogs would sway. The criminal gangs have become part and parcel of the state. Let me not even go and start speaking about open state. The key thing you need to understand when it comes to the insecurity we're dealing with is that in the Southwest, it's about a criminal alliance between those who govern and those who are professional street criminals. They have found alliances. They work hand in hand. I'm not speaking to Oshun because I don't live there, even though that's my home state. I can't speak to Ekiti, but you could have seen the confluence of criminals and politicians since the years of Fayoche, for instance. You cannot discount the same when you go to those states. You, I'm not suggesting that what you see in Lagos is any different in any one of the other states in the Southwest, but that is as far as criminality is concerned. You would always get the criminals who are not working for the state, and those are the ones you would usually find, you would usually find chased down, paraded by the police. That is what usually happens. Now, if you go to the southeast, you have unknown gunmen, unknown men. You have the regular IPOP. You have uh, EPA. You have all kinds of criminals. But when you look deep, you find very quickly that the key reason that these things are there are about the unaddressed grievances of those who seek citizenship but have been denied the right of citizenship they are rebellion, rightful rebellion, sometimes overtaken by criminals or criminality, and then you find copycats. Some of these were people licensed originally by politicians 
who were playing grievance politics in order to legalize their own powers, which were never exercised for the people. I'm speaking generally and in broad terms, and local variations might be there. But the key thing that you must understand about the violence and criminality in the Southeast is that it has its root on, in unresolved grievances. It has its roots in licensed militia by politicians who are seeking to control the streets and thereby control the ballot and to control state power. Opus of the my Nemo State. It's not by accident that you've got a person sat in the office of the governor who came fought in an election, fought in an election, and by some judicial abracadabra is there. So now tell me, how easy would it have been to evict him from that office if the state was to be at peace? But that's another story for another day. Look across the length and breadth of the Southeast. You find unresolved grievances, injustice, inequities, political brigandage, impunity being licensed, much the same as it is licensed in the Southwest for different reasons. But each one of these levers of violence that contributes to the insecurity works for persons working for the Nigerian state. Okay. Let's move to the South-South. Of course, the oil story tells its own story. The fact that the Nigerian state is essentially a licensee, or is it a licensor, by the end of the day, the Nigerian government cannot operate in the Niger Delta without the license of the militias. You see these happening with the fact that it has taken a tompolo to provide security for pipelines in the Niger Delta. This in a country that is blessed with a nervous, with a navy, that has police, with an army, air force, and yet, in the midst of all this, oil is being stolen. Who is fooling who? So, if there was security, if there was peace in the South South, wouldn't there be accountability? You betcha there will be. But how much easier is it to continue to steal the people blind, license impunity of the worst form, whilst pretending to be governing the people? That is the situation that the South South is. Now, let's jump up to the Middle Belt. The Middle Belt is the way it is because Fulani militia have been granted the right of impunity by the Nigerian state, which finds it easier to deal with having millions in IDP camps than to provide <coughs> security to the people. Fulani militia from all over the Sahel, roaming around with AK-47, heavily hand, and we call it Farmer headers clash. What clash? It's genocide. Call it what it is. So when we talk about insecurity, jump up to the northwest and the northeast. And actually, a whole lot of the Middle Belt as well is about mineral resources, gold, all kind of precious stones. Criminal gangs licensed by the state running riot, displacing people of their ancestral land because of mining interest. Go and listen to Belo Galadanchi. He's had a lot to say about this and he wouldn't be the first to say it. Some of us have also known this for a while. The main thing, foiling banditry and Islamist terrorism in northern Nigeria are gemstones, gold. That's what it's all about. And the state, is it that found colluding? Go take a watch at what Belo Galadanchi had to say. A whole lot of people, David Odeye has spoken at length about this one as well. You've got, mil you've got planes flying up and down the place with their transponders off, and our country is completely blind to who is flying in and who is flying out. But Bulaba and his goons will have me and you believing that they are bothered about illiterate protesters carrying Russian flags. Sometimes even the flag is not even looking Russian. But they know 
that in this court, why is Amfara building a, an airport? Exactly what for? Go take a listen to Galadanchi. Go and read David's work. I have more than enough to deal with. But the insecurity you see in our country is not there by accident. It's because we are ignoring what is sat right on top of our noses. We are deliberately pretending not to see what we are seeing. Because if we are admitting to what we are seeing, then we know that the bandits are not spirits. Armed robbers are not spirits. Terrorists are not spirits. The fact that our government is colluding is no, no longer a secret. The fact that our state is almost completely compromised because of the inability of the law to rule in any sphere of our national life is also no longer exactly a secret. The next thing is ignorance. Ignorance is not knowing what is in your own enlightened selfish interest. It's not necessarily an inability to read. Right. Once you are not able to tell what is in your enlightened selfish interest, I'm not even saying that collective interest, but if it is enlightened, it is the collective selfish interest of the majority of a society that builds the society. The key thing is enlightened. Why are you looking to take more than you can eat when you can't keep anything beyond this life that you are living? Why? What for? Exactly what for? What for? So ignorance, you have seen professors, head professors, head pastors, head clerics, imams, Muslim clerics, sheikhs, speaking without enlightened selfish interest focused on the here and now to the point where they are happy to cut down the trees that should provide food and shade for their children in the future simply because they are feeling less than warm in the moment. Myopia. So once you are afflicted by myopia, my book, the ignorant, and then there is poverty. Look around the country. Poverty has been weaponized against our people. People have become completely existential. So you have religion and ethnic violence all over the country, found on poverty, found on ignorance. You've got social decay, hunger, hunger. Hunger is real. I'm not talking about hunger on account of poverty. It used to be that however poor you are, you could still eat, but this is different. This is hunger that is deeper and much worse than poverty. This is hunger that makes a man eat grass, corn husk. Yeah, that level of hunger bordering on starvation. It wouldn't be too long before we start seeing United Nations rations to keep people from having kwashoko at the rate that we are going. The country has suffered a complete collapse of its infrastructure, healthcare, education, our roads, electricity. The Nigerian electric grid, national grid has collapsed more times. More times, I, I dare to say, than even Bulaba. Bulaba has collapsed only once. National grid in the last year must have collapsed at least about 10 times. Instead of complaining about the collapsing grid, they're busy laughing and driving memes about Bulaba's collapse. Energy scarcity, no electricity, petrol has gone through the roof and you still won't find it. Our problems are endless. Our environment degraded, the hopelessness, the collapse of the state, the judicial system, everything suggests that we are in serious, deep 
problems. But on Thursday or Friday, I think, my friend, Manzi the Raconteur, he posted a picture of me. He said, truth teller. And one of the many detractors came around and said, oh, he's telling us the problem all the time. All he talks about are the problems that, like I just did for the last 22 minutes. But the problems bear repetition so that we might clearly understand the unsustainability of our current trajectories. But I have tried my best to adumbrate the issues as it relates to the problem and I will round up as far as that is concerned by simply pointing out one obvious fact. Each and every one of the things that I've talked about for the last 20 odd minutes, they are actually fruits derived from a single tree. It is the tree of impunity. A country unanchored to law drifts in multiple directions and can never have citizens, can never have a democracy, and cannot, in truth, be called a sustainable nation or state. Now, we're done with all of these, but what is the solution? Aside from the obvious answer that we must find a way to anchor our country to the rule of law, I think it is actually quite disingenuous for those that, they are, that are demanding solutions of me because I have never shied away from offering the solution from the first moment of my intervention in the public space in Nigeria. The solution is very simple. Nigeria can only be saved by a revolution. A state whose institutions have been hijacked by criminals can no longer be saved by its own mechanisms. The judiciary is demonstrably captured. It has given more than enough evidence of his incapacity to be the last hope of the common man. That is clear. The police is as complicit as any one of us. The army is already compromised beyond. Once upon a time, it pretended to be the institution that could save Nigeria from itself. But frankly, as that institution saved itself from itself, I am not a believer in military intervention in democracies. Even as imperfect, defective, fraudulent as this democracy is, even as fraudulent as our constitution is, I am not interested in a band of armed men without, please. So what I'm trying to help you understand is that all the institutions of state that could have been depended upon, where, where are the council of elders? Which elders? Which elder are you actually going to call? The best of the lot is Obasanjo. And actually, let's ask ourselves, who is the architect of today's Wa'alas? You can't look any further than Aremu. So who is the elder? Babangida? Who, who, which elder do we have? Or is it the traditional rulers appointed by local government chairmen who are essentially underlings and crooks who work for the governors and their godfathers? Which traditional rulers? Which one? How many of them can be spoken of with any reference? Are those not the ones gathered in National Rock when Bulaba was telling them, or rather telling them, reminding them that he bought this country, so it's a slave deed, and he bought it. So which one of them? Where is the state organ to which we might appeal for our country to be saved? The reality is that it's all gone. It is all gone. Day before yesterday, I went to Facebook, and um, as I went to my page, as, as I got to Facebook, I saw the usual thing, what was on your mind? And I realized that the only thing on my mind is how to bring about a peaceful revolution in Nigeria. I am being careful to explain this to all of us. Nigeria is already in the grip of a violent cycle so pretended by the government against the Nigerian people. 
It is almost as if those governing Nigeria, pyromaniacs, are interested in the country burning down so that they might reinvent it in order to avoid rendering account for their, for, for their stealing and for their crimes against the Nigerian people. With each successive ruiner of Nigeria, this evil becomes even more widespread and egregious and nobody is held accountable for the previous one. 16 years, PDP assailed this country. Stole and stole and stole. And after 16 years, on the back of a fraudulent agenda for change that they never explained to the people, and that all of you idiots demanding that I offer you solution today did not listen when I was warning you, do not die in their war. These people, nothing will change. They will change nothing. It's the same people. Even the ones that call themselves the most conscious layers were fooled. I did everything I could to warn you. These ones are worse than the ones they are looking to replace. Did you listen? No. You all voted Buari, a man who left office for 30 years. He didn't pick up a certificate. He didn't write a single book. He celibate bulls. Did not even pretend to multiply the barren cows. So what are you doing? You went ahead and voted for that one, surrounded by all kinds of crooks, even if you believed him to have been a saint. What about all the crooks that were surrounding him? But no, he was the saint of Dora. Look at where we are now. That one came, he committed worse crimes than the PDP. He, didn't, he couldn't catch a single one of the PDP thieves because all the PDP thieves came into the APC to join the crooks that were already in the APC and you were hearing it loud and clear. Or she or Molle told you, join us and your sins are forgiven. So they joined the APC. None of the thieves could be held responsible. Akpabio became a minister in the cabinet of your saint. And then when the saint left and brought this one, this disaster, Akpabio became the Senate President, in the chambers of your country, they are singing on your mandate, we shall stand. The national anthem was changed within days, maybe like 72 hours or thereabout. National minimum wage, up until today, no implementation, but fuel is over a thousand. How do you expect anything to change with this kind of people in power. So yeah, what is on my mind is a peaceful revolution in Nigeria. There is a complete compromise already of all state institutions. All right, my great and wonderful people, I believe you don't listen to the full message. And equally understand by now, the reason why BC we already beg you ahead of time, say make you pay attention to videos and messages on BC they receive from people like this. And as we equally the talk and say people like this, not be people want to be with you ignore. And again, people like this, now once in a lifetime, now it will deceive them. May God protect them and also make us see the reality of the battle and evidences of all the things we're going to be in the try to reveal to Nigerians. And equally, may God give us the mind to work with vision in order for us to see the breakthrough. If not, all of us will still continue for this and our children will come meet and continue from where we stop. Because these uh, crook leaders, they're not ready to part ways anytime soon. All right, I'll leave you to share your own opinion with us on the comment section concerning that very one, even as we draw the line of this broadcast here. We will see you again, and we'll see you. Remember, we love you all. Bye-bye.